Oral health is important in its own right, but the mouth can also provide clues to many aspects of a patient's overall health. A comprehensive oral exam can be completed in five minutes or less, offering medical providers an opportunity to detect early indications of systemic diseases such as diabetes, HIV, Sjogren's syndrome, and other conditions that can manifest in the head and neck region. Let's begin by externally evaluating the head and neck. During the extraoral examination, note the symmetry of the face and check the skin for color, dryness, and any lesions. Palpate for lymphadenopathy around the jaw and neck. A normal mandibular range of motion is 30 to 50 millimeters, measured between the upper and lower central incisors, which is equivalent to the width of three to four fingers. Jaw joint clicking or popping with function may be normal unless it is associated with pain or limitations in opening. Referral to a dentist for management is appropriate. Pay close attention to the vermilion border of the lips for persistent lesions. Increased sun exposure may be a risk factor for actinic keratosis. Dysplasia or squamous cell carcinoma of the lips may appear as thickened, hyperkeratotic lesions that may frequently peel and bleed. Looking interorally, it is important to evaluate the entire oral cavity before focusing on a specific area. Develop a pattern of doing the interoral exam so that you consistently view the entire space. Standing on the right side of the patient, retract the cheek with a tongue blade or gloved hand and visually scan the left buccal mucosa. Scan the lower labial vestibule extending over to the right buccal mucosa. Visualize the upper labial vestibule before returning to the left buccal mucosa. Ask the patient to tilt their head back and look up at the ceiling to easily assess the tissues of the hard palate, oropharynx, and tonsillar area. Hold the anterior third of the tongue with a 2x2 two two gauze and your thumb and forefinger. Gently retract the tongue to visualize and palpate the lateral borders and base. Ask the patient to lift the tongue up and back to visualize the floor of the mouth. Palpate the area to look for lesions and masses in the sublingual and submandibular salivary glands. Focusing next on the hard tissues, there are 20 primary teeth and up to 32 permanent teeth. The adult teeth are usually all present by age 14, except for the wisdom teeth, which may be uninterrupted and only seen on x-ray. The most common disease of the oral cavity is dental decay, followed by periodontal disease, which is an infection of the gums. Dental decay and periodontitis may be indicators of a patient's overall health, as they have been linked to poor nutrition, eating disorders, substance abuse, and other conditions. Large cavities can sometimes be detected clinically by missing tooth structure, or as black, brown, orange, or chalky white colors. Discoloration of teeth can also represent exposed roots, loss of enamel from clenching or grinding, insufficient oral hygiene, or certain foods and drinks that can stain teeth. An abscess tooth may also have a swelling on the adjacent gingival tissues called a perulus. A chronic infection may coalesce into a draining fistula, and at this point, the tooth may be asymptomatic. Other abnormalities of the teeth may indicate underlying health issues. Generalized broken down chipped tooth cusps may be a sign of substance abuse seen with methamphetamine use or overconsumption of sweet drinks. Erosion of the enamel from the lingual tooth surfaces may indicate an eating disorder like bulimia. Erupting wisdom teeth may be a source of throbbing pain, redness, swelling, and limitation of jaw opening. Inflammation and infection associated with erupting wisdom teeth, or pericoronitis, is typically a problem of young adults, but may also impact adults who have never had their wisdom teeth removed. Palpation of the gingival tissues behind the second molars will elicit pain. Periodontal disease is the leading cause of tooth loss in adults and may also be an indicator of untreated diabetes or tobacco use. Some studies have linked periodontal disease to cardiovascular disease, problem pregnancies, and respiratory disease. If you suspect your patient has either dental decay or periodontal disease, referral to the dentist for management is recommended. Saliva from the parotid, submandibular, and sublingual glands can be expressed to evaluate for infections or blockages. To assess the parotid gland, 
Cup the angle of the mandible with your hand and massage the face upwards towards the eye, watching the duct for saliva to be expressed. Clear fluid is expected. Any white or yellowish discharge may indicate infection, especially if associated with symptoms of pain or swelling. Many common medications are known to cause a reduction in saliva flow. Patients should be counseled about the increased risk of tooth decay with a dry mouth. For persistent dry mouth accompanied by dry eyes, consider evaluating for Sjogren's syndrome. Patients receiving high-dose radiation of the head and neck may also develop dry mouth or xerostomia and are at increased risk of developing dental decay. You may encounter some common intraoral findings that are variations of normal and do not require management. Excess bone can commonly develop in the upper and lower jaws. A torus palatinus may be present on the roof of the mouth, and a torus mandibularis is located on the inside surfaces of the lower jaw, bilaterally. Bony exostoses may develop on the buccal or cheek side surfaces of the jaws in the region of the premolars. In rare instances, an exostosis may represent bony pathology, and any changes in size should be managed appropriately by a referral to an oral surgeon. Geographic tongue lesions are so characteristic that the appearance is pathognomonic. They appear as map-like areas that are smooth and red with a semi-lunar whitish-yellow border. All ages are affected, and lesions may be associated with a burning sensation. Foliate papillae appear as an area of vertical folds and grooves located on the extreme posterior lateral surface of the tongue and are occasionally mistaken for tumors or inflammatory disease. Other oral conditions may require more comprehensive diagnosis and medical management. Canker sores or apthis lesions are shallow yellowish ulcerations with a red halo localized to unattached mucosal tissues. They present as solitary or clusters of painful ulcers ranging in size from less than one millimeter to two centimeters. Ulcers that do not resolve within two weeks may need a biopsy to rule out an infectious pathology or oral cancer. While cold sores on the lips are obvious to medical practitioners, intraoral herpes simplex virus may appear as a cluster of multiple punctate lesions on the attached gingiva or hard palate. Lesions are associated with a sudden onset of moderate to severe pain that may refer into an adjacent tooth. Thrush, or oral candidiasis, appears as red patches localized to the angles of the mouth or as soft white plaques on any mucosal surface that will wipe off and may reveal an underlying erythematous mucosa. Patients may complain of a generalized oral burning sensation. Lichen planus is a common autoimmune disorder of the oral tissues, appearing as regions of white lichenoid striae with or without underlying erythema and pseudomembranous ulcerations. It can be bilateral or unilateral, and patients may complain of a sensitivity of the lining of their mouth to acidic foods or some toothpastes. Lichen planus is a chronic condition that may mask the presence of an oral cancer. Oral cancer may appear as a unilateral granular change to the mucosa or a persistent ulceration that may or may not be symptomatic. In later stages, the lesion may become indurated, exophytic, painful, and ulcerated. The most common site of oral cancer is the floor of mouth and lateral tongue. However, primary squamous cell carcinoma may involve any oral tissue. Risk factors include smoking, alcohol consumption, or human papillomavirus and oropharyngeal cancers. When reviewing the patient's medical history, certain therapies such as bisphosphonate treatment or radiation therapy for oral cancer can put a patient at risk for exposed jawbone or osteonecrosis, especially after trauma, such as a tooth extraction. Osteonecrosis can present with or without pain. Referral to an oral and maxillofacial surgeon is recommended.
Any soft tissue irregularities should be reassessed in two weeks and biopsied if persistent. Referral to a general dentist, oral medicine specialist, oral pathologist, oral surgeon, or otolaryngologist for further evaluation is recommended. The integration of dental and medical health care is critical. Early detection of oral diseases through a comprehensive but concise exam of the mouth can lead to appropriate intervention and improved quality of life. The mouth is the gateway to the body and in essence a sentinel of overall health and wellness. Early detection of medical conditions through a comprehensive and concise exam of the oral cavity can lead to timely management of disease and improve quality of life for patients. For more information about oral health research supported by the National Institutes of Health, visit the website of the National Institute of Dental and Craniofacial Research at www.nidcr.nih.gov.